Hey, hey, what's up, guys? Let me get the mic set up. We'll do a little monster ASMR. Oh, snap, dude. <laughs> it kind of got all over. Anyway, I just wanted to jump on live and talk about the uh, little mini haul that I got. It's not my Wednesday haul whenever I go to Dallas, but this is just the um, like local stores. Yesterday, I hit up one store, and then I just got back from a Goodwill. And I was looking for like a video to watch on YouTube and I was like, oh, I wonder if somebody's live. And then instead of just scrolling and scrolling to find like the perfect video that can get me through uh, detagging and like folding the clothes and deciding which ones need to be washed. I know a lot of people ask about that, but I decided, you know what, let me just go live. Maybe some people are out there like me trying to find something to watch, some live entertainment. So let's bring it. Let's bring the live entertainment today. Um, probably because I got the Skittles in the system right now and I got the monster crack. So. Let's uh let's get after it. I, I did pretty good at the local Goodwill. I just got back. If you guys check out my Instagram stories, it's Taylor underscore exchange. The links are on the channel and uh, my Facebook business page, Taylor Exchange. I'm trying to build that. I also put it on there. Those are linked together. So if you guys didn't know, you do social media, your stories can link with your Facebook because Meta, the same company, you know. Anyway, I was in there for 23 minutes. I got there. I don't know, maybe maybe six minutes early, and there was 45 people in line, at least. I didn't count, but there was at least 40-plus people waiting in line. We have color change days on Tuesdays, and those are the days that people get the deals. They also are renovating half of the store. Thank goodness. That building has been there for years. It used to be a grocery store, um, department store, and they're finally renovating like half of it, and then they're going to move everything over and renovate the other half. So. Hopefully they can get done with that. Miriam Wilson, hello from Arkansas. Hello from Texas. You're the first one in. I'm going to drop the camera just a smidge. I got a new shirt today, guys. Um, I got this last week. I wear a lot of like black t-shirts. This has got the Under Armour camo. This shirt actually sells pretty well. You could probably get like $18 to $22 for this shirt because people love black. People love Texas. I, I mean, people love camo and like Texans like, you know, anyway, anyway. Let's just let's just skip that. But this is a good shirt to sell. So I'm glad some people are here. 16 people's one like whoever the soldier was that liked that first. Thank you. I appreciate it. Usually I like my own videos, but on the lives, uh, I don't like the lives until later. Just because, you know, I mean, it's kind of hard to click. So, yeah. Uh, Beat Fame says, let's go. Drifter Thrifter says, sugar. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm fired up. I mowed the lawn this morning. I need to take a photo of that and put it on my Instagram. The grass, man, the grass and the and the rain, it just, we have nice Bermuda grass, but it's, it's heavy in some areas and it's patched in others. We do do lawn treatment, but like it takes years to get that like Hank Hill perfect lawn. And right now I need to like aerate and pull the, there's not really any weeds, but I need to aerate the low spots and then put like, um, you know, whenever you cut the grass clippings, you can actually put that. It's like seeding your lawn instead of buying actual grass seeds. You can use the clippings to, to seed your own lawn. And I did that this morning and then I got done and I went straight to Goodwill and then I got the energy drink and then the Skittles and then now I'm back here at the house. And uh, yeah, I got a lot to talk about. I'm a talker. So hopefully you guys can just uh, buckle up, strap in. And let's get after it. CV15 says, ah, you're live. You motivated me to look more into the men's department. Excellent, man. A lot of money in men's, but a lot less donations for men's. It's probably like a quarter or even less than the than the entire clothing of the thrift store because you got kids, women's, and and men's. Mm. Skittles isn't like an easy thing to chew through. So let me just go through a shirt while I'm chewing on this. Plains Western wear. This is a short sleeve pearl snap. So I got this for $2.99 at the Faith Mission thr Thrift Store or Faith Resale Thrift Store in my town. Honestly, Plains is a brand that like I never really looked at before. But when I got deeper into the men's, I noticed that like pretty much anything pearl snap that's like mid-tier can do okay. I pull usually $19 shipped for an item like this. So at $3, you're making like seven, eight bucks. Uh, the brown one's not like the strongest color. And if you guys have watched my videos, what I do for these shirts before I fold them 
first kind of like smell them. So most of the time, the clothes are good. People ask if I wash all the clothes. I don't wash every single item. I wash like a couple loads a week, but usually it's like when I'm taking photos. So I like throw it to the side or like anything. Anyway, this uh, top button, I leave unbuttoned because I put hangers in from the top. So uh, that's pretty much how it is. The rest of the pocket buttons are buttoned. And then if there's a cuff button or a collar button, I don't button those because they're really small buttons and it's kind of hard on my fingers and it takes too long. So we just kind of fold it in half and then, and then fold this here. And it looks like that. And then it goes on the rack. If anything like smells like cologne or smells bad, I put it to the side. But honestly, like these clothes smell fine to me. They honestly smell better than my clothes. I tell people that and they're just like, ah. Uh. All right. So PK Zinc says, hey, Sean, today's my sourcing morning at Texas Thrift, 30% off for people my age. Oh, the senior citizen discount. Dang. I'm using data, so can't monitor the live. Sorry, bro. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. If you guys don't know, I typically go live on Sundays at 1 p.m. Central time. It's going to switch to Saturdays once football season starts. And uh, I wanted to go live again this week because I kind of messed up the last week's stream. I tried to do it off of my iPhone 14, but it didn't carry the stream clear the whole way through. So then I like had to burn 26 minutes of that stream and start a new one. And then my wife, I was going to spend time with her. So I only went for like 50 something minutes and I wanted to pop on here just because, you know, kind of cheated you out of that last one. And at the same time, I want to provide some entertainment uh, for those out there because I couldn't find anybody live. I don't know if there's somebody that goes live during the mornings on Tuesdays, but <laughs> looks like I'm the guy uh, right here. This is actually pretty funny because this Tommy Bahama and I don't know what you call like this. Um, it's not like a, a true blue, you know, it's, it's, it's a little different, but I own this shirt before I got into reselling clothes. I bought this shirt for $40 at a TJ Maxx and it's a size medium. This one's a large and it does have like this little barb here. My rule with barbs is if the barb is impeding on the size or the brand, I take it off. If it's like off to the side, I usually leave it. This one's in kind of no man's land. I would probably take it off just cause it's so small that, um, People might think it's a flaw. And if you guys just saw that, I grabbed the thick part uh, with my left hand and then I put my thumb on the small part and I just pop it off. You do have to have a bit of strength to get it off. But um, anyway, yeah, I own this shirt in a medium. And, you know, Tommy Bahama, it's it's all over the place. There's tons of tons of items for that brand, but this one's going to be good. It smells pretty solid to me. And I do separate like Short sleeve button and pearl snaps are in one stack and then polos are in another stack and long sleeve button shirts are in another stack. And I do that for my employee, Randy, so that she can go faster really when it comes to listing, not necessarily photos because you sell similar off of the category. And she's getting really good though. So I'll just separate them later because I don't want to like walk over to the rack every time. Beat fame says doing measurements right now. Right on, right on. Uh, Samantha says, hi from Massachusetts. Is it Massachusetts or Massachusetts? That's cool. You guys are smart up there, right? I hear they're smarter in the Northeast. I'm going to be uh, respectful of the live and turn my phone on silent mode. But uh, I will be monitoring it because I have a young son, Seth. He's six months today. Happy half year birthday, son. He's got a six month appointment. So that's at 2.30. I'm going to go to that. And uh, we get to see how much he weighs. We haven't weighed him in a while. I think since he was like 14 pounds, and he's definitely he's definitely chunkier than that now. All right. Next up, we have this um, Wrangler George Strait. Wrangler George Strait is definitely one of their oh, – this is white. Look at how the camera's changing because of the lighting. Wrangler George Strait is definitely one of the um, lines of Wrangler that sell well for me at least. And the white shirts, if you can catch them without stains, like this could be a $25 shirt. Um, your, your rancher guy is going to wear this to church. Um, you can have it as like, a a wedding or, you know, funeral or like, you know, uh, event type shirt, like a nice base color. Usually every, Oh, the, the focus is kind of all over the place. We'll get it. We'll get it going. Maybe. So, Usually every guy in their closet will have like a white shirt, like a plain white shirt. So $3 into this one and we're expecting 25, I think. A new start LP says, hello from Kansas. 
You are flying high today, Monsters and Skittles. <laughs> I came to party today, man. I was ready to rock. And it was one of those days, I think it's because I mowed the lawn this morning. So like my energy level is a little low. I used to do workouts in the morning, but um, I think it's my son waking up in the middle of the night or just like something's changed where I, I don't have the drive to do a workout in the morning. So because I mowed the lawn, I felt like I was going to need a little boost to get through this day. And that's why I went with the candy and, and sugar, <laughs> the candy and sugar. Cool. So yeah, I unbuttoned the top cuff button or the top collar button and that one button and then just kind of fold this in half. So yeah, I got 28 items at Goodwill. The ones I'm going through now, it looks like I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or seven. So I got seven yesterday. And that was seven at three dollars. So that was 21 bucks. And then I got 28 items from Goodwill. Most of those shirts are five dollars. I'll show I'll let you know when I get to those. And um, that's kind of how it is. Shirts are like five bucks now at, at like good thrift stores. I mean, some of the other ones I go to in Dallas, it's like nine bucks for a button up or um you got to catch them on half off days it, it's just getting a little more competitive for the volume cheap seller like myself and that's why people are trying to go to high profit sales and and for me i'm developing a buy sell trade store in my town and that's going to give me the advantage on getting items for cheap and that's how i'm going to be able to keep doing this so let's see cv 15 CV15 says, yeah, it was weird how many resellers you see in the men's department. Yeah. I mean, and I see a lot of women in there too, because they're uh they know they know what styles look good on their man. So they're they're in there hunting for them too. Brianna Jane, Jenny, Janie, Janie. I love these lives during the day. Get me through the boring nine to five life. I literally list while <laughs> my nine to five. Don't tell your boss. And if he comes over to the channel, like don't have them hit the thumbs down. Make them hit the thumbs up and close the window. I actually used to, there's a shortcut on the Windows keys or Mac. I think it's control M to minimize the screen. So I would like control M real fast to like minimize because I'd be searching comps on eBay uh, at my last job. So I feel you. But if my employee was doing that, I would come down on her hard. I'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> but she's working. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Here's a prime example. So the barb is right through the tag instead of off to the side. So we're going to take this one off. If you guys want to see a little demo. Well, just pop it right off. Be careful, though. You can tear up some of the polyester shirts that way. Worst thing you can do is put a hole in a shirt you just bought. Yeah, this, these shirts are clean, man. This is a medium custom fit. I was looking into the Ralph Lauren like fits and um, they're, they're a bit confusing. Custom fit, I think is tighter on like the arms or something, the sleeves. And then a lot of the Ralph Lauren's, the back of the Ralph Lauren, no Ralph Lauren. Yeah, I said it right. The backs are way longer than the fronts because they're meant to be tucked in. And then other ones, they're equal. And then some of them are super big for like the size. And my uh, lister, my employee, Randy, she's like, because I tell her, okay, so this shirt right now is a large. I am a size like medium large, but this measures pit to pit a 22 inch. Like large is typically 23. So when I tell her, if you were to list this shirt, you would put men's, it'd be Under Armour camo, you know, or Under Armour short sleeve sh shirt, men's large, but then I put parentheses medium. And then I would put black camo. But for her, I told her, like, it's hard to understand if, like, this shirt shrank to a medium size. This Ralph Lauren, if it's a size, like, 25, pit to pit, but it's actually a large or extra large, some of them are just big and boxy like that. Like, that's the style of the shirt. So you wouldn't say it's a large parentheses 2XL because that'd be incorrect. So it's, it's definitely um, – that's a hard one to train. And um, somebody asked me about why don't you have her go uh, sourcing with you last last week on my live. And I think she could after she does thousands of photos and sees the brands, she'll have a good recognition of like, oh, that's something Sean sells in the store. So then she would have to figure out the money, like don't spend over this much money per item. So, oh, great deals. Depot with the $2 super chat. Thank you. 
He put Hey You with the green uh, person dancing. I don't know if it's like a pear or something, a fruit. Very cool. Thank you for the super chat. You are the uh, fourth person to ever give me money. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. It means a lot, man. Let's see. We have uh, CV15. However, I found some Red Baker, Cool, and Peter Millar. I've never heard of Red Baker. I may have to look that one up. Some of those brands like are just regional or you know certain states, but yeah, I've never heard of Red Baker. That sounds interesting. But yeah, it's cool, man. It's good to find uh, it's good to find good brands. Here's another Ralph Lauren. This is an orange. It's XL. This tag's a newer tag with the yellow lettering than the white lettering one. Oh, you put Ted Baker instead of Red Baker. CB15 came in. Yeah, Ted Baker. Okay, I, I don't know. Um, I have to look into that one. I think that's one of the ones that I think it has to have like decent prints or like a big size for me to buy because I don't buy it very often. All right. But yeah, just a plain short sleeve button shirt. Pretty cool. Pretty cool right here. And yeah, a lot of these shirts that you guys are seeing, I list at $15.99 plus $8.99. So pretty much $25 is like the max I would get at a full price. And I accept as low as like, depending on how long it's been listed, but I'll accept like $10 plus $8.99. So that's like $19. And um yeah, I mean, if you sell like ten thousand items a year at that range, like you're gonna you're gonna be all right. Jonathan Molina, isn't it crazy how far you've come? How does it feel? Yeah, uh, yeah. So um, it feels it feels like it, it feels good. I mean, it, it feels good to have money. I'm at the point where um, like I just paid off my wife's car. That was like 12, seven. So like having liquid cash to do something like that is huge. Um, you know, we're getting a carport, which is another you know, like good grip of money, but, uh, it always, I always feel like I can do more because I know the tools and it's just a matter of like getting things together. Like for example, I was looking into buying like a bale of clothing. A bale of clothing is 1500 pounds. They charge uh, 30 cents a pound typically, or 15 cents if you can get it cheap. So imagine having 1,500 pounds of clothing. That's probably like two to 3,000 pieces, maybe 2,500. Sorting through all those pieces, listing them all on eBay, and then making like you spend 525, maybe you make 2,000 or whatever. And say you can do that in a week, like that's 2,000 a week. And that's very, very labor intensive. But I know I could do that if I was able to get all that like in play. That's That's something that it's like you always want to think bigger and bigger. Like if I just think, okay, I'm good now. Let me just stay at this level. I'll make a decent living, sure. But eventually things will catch up like the, you know, or, or not catch up, but but shift. So say thrift store prices shift and you start finding inventory like cheaper, like the bales. Or, um, you know, it's like, I don't know if it's just how I'm wired or the potential I can see. Like um, YouTube has great growth. Like I haven't talked much about like the subscriber growth and the view growth, but like, it, it's been nice. It's not enough to like retire on, but it could rival that income could eventually rival, um, my, my eBay income. There's, there are YouTubers out there. You guys know the ones that have like all the views and, and, and they're really popular. Like they are making solid money on YouTube, probably more than what they're reselling or at least close to it. So it, it's like, there's a lot of irons in the fire and I'm trying to open a buy, sell trade store, which I should get the keys today. I was supposed to get them yesterday, but they changed the locks uh, to make sure you get a fresh key and a fresh lock. And she just was behind by a day. So I should get them today. But yeah, if, if, if you wanted me to say like how I feel starting out selling like uh, VCR combos or you can look at those old videos. I mean, I did that from my, uh, my, my wife's old laptop. Uh, it was definitely like, it's, it's been a, a grind. And, and I want to explain too, like somebody um, had left a really long comment. And I read it this morning while I was holding my son after he ate, it was like four 30 and I was reading it and she said, or he, I think, I don't know. It said, can you explain a video for like a day one or like, how do you do this? How do you do this? How do you do this? Like, uh, where do I buy items? Should I buy a shipping scale? Should I buy a, a roller? Should I buy all these things? And I, I really brought me back to that day one of like, man, like there's a lot you have to learn to scale to what you see on YouTube. Like people who are able to resell and do YouTube definitely have a grasp of the reselling. Now there's probably some that don't really know what they're doing, but they're enjoying like showing the growth. But the ones that are out there, like 
um, making a full-time living on eBay, but then also doing videos, they have it dialed into the point where they can spare the time to do 10 to 15 hours a week of YouTube. So I, she wanted me to, they, they wanted me to make a video of like explaining what to do. And, and I don't think you would ever do it justice because there's like, I've watched thousands of hours of YouTubers, uh, resellers on YouTube. I've, I've spent thousands of hours looking in my phone at comps for like Maurice Jean size 18, 24. Like I know the, the margins on a lot of clothes and it's very difficult to be like, do this and you'll succeed because you probably won't like, it's going to take a lot of work and you have to build it over the years. I mean, I, that's a great, I'm glad you said that. How does it feel? It feels great. It feels great to run my own business, to have my own company, to have an employee now who's like, you know, she's relying on me for, for money, which is great. And eventually I want her to, um, just work for me like full time. And that is like one of my next goals. So I'm just trying to grow, man. But thank you, uh, Jonathan for that. Dude, you really, you kind of hit me in the, hit me in the, uh, like I was already thinking that, you know, because of that comment I got this morning. So yeah, I, I, I feel great, man. It feels great to not, uh, have to punch in anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let's like close the little lights a little bit. Yeah, man. It feels great, man. And great deal. Said good morning. Good morning, man. Thanks for the two bucks. Jay said hello from Connecticut. Another another smart state. Let me bump up the vocabulary for some of you guys. All right. Let's get another shirt before I start I'm just rambling more. We've got uh, Under Armour. Now this is Under Armour charged cotton. Don't ask me what charged cotton is, but I'm a big fan of Under Armour sleeveless. They sell really well. The typical person that's going to buy this is your gym goer, your uh, football player, you know, your athlete in high school. Um, they're going to buy this shirt. And why buy it new when you can buy it used for me for cheaper and they're just going to sweat through it and stuff. So, yeah, charged, definitely have charged cotton or just charged Under Armour. Excuse me. <laughs> Under Armour charged in the title, you'll be good. Flippin' Crazy Kimmy, 58. I like watching your videos. I learn a lot. I'm also a seller and love doing clothes and shoes. Thank you for the videos. Well, thank you for the kind words. I, um, I'm i glad glad to hear it, you know, glad to hear that people are liking them. I do want to do more of like some of my more entertaining intros. Like I was thinking about that the other day. I've been mailing them in. I'll be honest with you. I've been mailing in some of these videos. Like today I'm going to put out the best of the week, what sold. It's pretty much me just going through my phone talking about my best sales of the week. And I want to get back to doing like the funny intros and stuff, but it's interesting because some of those videos, a lot of people like them, right? And, and you get more views, but it takes much, much more time and effort and more hours into the editing and like the setup, the script, whatever. But when you're, when you're still getting decent views and you're just kind of sitting and, and like explaining your thoughts, which is such a powerful thing, which I really appreciate if you're able to create content talking about like whatever goes through your noggin and it's helping people like a cons a cons consultant, a consultant, like things like that. It's a very uh, humbling thing to, to be able to make money that way. So it's like, I don't want to miss a video day because I am making money on these videos. Like today I'll probably make like 12 or $15 from this video. But if it gets watched by the people who are at work or, you know, doing other things, it'll end up being like 20 to $30. So it, it's like, would you put out a live every day to make $30 a day or $20 a day? Like that's 600 to 900 a month, but you don't want to saturate it. You don't want to just like put out garbage, but um, I do want to do more of a production video because that's where I think you could get more of the virality. And also it's an, it's a good feeling to go back and be like, that was a funny video. Like I enjoyed making that video. Um, I didn't just sit there and like read solds on my phone, but people want that data too. They want to hear like what's selling so they can go find it. So it's, it's just a balance of like how good you want to make the videos. And, and you hear Mr. Beast talk, like make the best videos possible. That's pretty much it. Like get people to watch and stay watching and make it a good video. So I want to get back to that. I'm just not like, I'm not really a YouTuber. Like I'm a clothing reseller, but I enjoy the I enjoy the community more than anything. 42 people, 13 likes on a Tuesday morning. And I was about to watch, I don't know, like some movie or something, you know, like I, you know, like a movie I've probably seen already. 
anyway, I'd much rather talk to you fine people. So we have a Wrangler shirt. Now this is, um, it's like they're heavier. It's not like a heavy cotton, but it's definitely a good thick cotton. It's the Pearl Snap. This type of shirt right here is really desirable for people that are working on farms. It's got 16 by 34, which I'm not a big fan or like knowledgeable. I don't look up what all that means, but I know 16 is, is like, I think it's like a medium pit to pit. So yeah, this is a great shirt. Honestly, I would keep it, but it's purple, uh, that maroon purple. And I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of that color. So we are going to uh, put it aside, but guess what? This will sell right away. These are really good sellers. Pretty much Wrangler Pearl Snap. I don't know if it's because it looks vintagey or maybe that is vintage. Uh, people are really liking that nowadays. JD, I just got back from the bins a little while ago. 30 items in about an hour, not too shabby. Yeah, good job, man. Way to go. It's awesome. People ask me about the bins all the time, man. Would you drive two and a half hours to go to the bins for three or four hours and drive another two and a half hours? Like how many, JD, how many items do you think you could get if you spent six hours at the bins? Flipping crazy Kimmy says men's shirts sell better for me. I sell some women's stuff too. And I'm honestly going to start selling some more women's clothing. I'm just trying not to spend too much time acquiring it or spending any money on it. So there's ways to get free inventory though. It's just usually really low quality stuff. Okay. This is an Eddie Bauer like rain jacket. It's got the hood that's like rolled up in it. I don't look at the jackets. Sorry. I didn't even put beard oil on today. Not good. I don't do, I don't go through the jackets very often. It smells good. But um, there's a lot of money in jackets. This is like a $35 rain jacket. And it was, he, he charged me $6.99 for it, which, I mean, come on now. It should have, I wish it would have just been $2.99, but uh, he, he called it a jacket, which it is a jacket. It's fine. Marion Wilson says, why do you leave the barbs on? Because I don't like taking them all off. It's a pain. It kind of hurts my fingers and uh, it's, it's really slow. If you have, usually I have, like after Wednesday, I'll have 150 to like 250 items and all of them have tags or barbs. So if it's just a barb with no price, I just leave it on. I just take the money, the tag price off. It's just too much work. And I sell them, like I've had two people mention the barbs. One said, dude, you really left the thrift store barb on it, laugh out loud. And I said, yes. The other person said, hey, I'm curious why this colored barb is on. And I just said, it's for my inventory system. <laughs> Out of 17,000 sales, you only get two people mentioning it. So I, th I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, CV15 says Ted Baker retails for a hundred. That's good. See, Daniel Cremieux though is sold at Dillard's and that retails for a lot. And I never resell that brand. It's very difficult to. So I don't always look at the retail as like gold, but it, it's a decent indicator. Carol Lip Tick, Lip, uh, Lip Tack, Take Tack. Hey, Sean, greetings from Poland. Well, hello. Hello. Welcome in. Eric says, Harry Tornado, the YouTuber, first. He's a reseller second. Yeah, he's got a very interesting um, climb to uh, his success. And I followed him for a pretty good while early on, mainly because he was kind of friends with Lotta Josh, and I really like Lotta Josh um, on YouTube. But yeah, Harry Tornado, I mean, I think if he did just reselling and was never a YouTuber, he could probably do that just fine and, and make like, you know, 60 to 80K. But uh, he's he's so good at YouTube. And then he had the combination of like the Goodwill palettes and then COVID and people just at home learning and wanting to learn resale. So he really got into it. Like I can only imagine if I was doing what I'm doing now back when COVID happened, like it would have been um, crazy growth, I think. But yeah, he's he's doing really well, you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like. Honestly, I've got I've got a, a business. I haven't told people about it much, but Bo Johnson did a video about it. There's a program called the Amazon Influencer Program. Like you see people with Amazon links, right? And it's like I have my affiliate links. When you buy it, I earn like a, a percentage because I'm an Amazon um, affiliate or whatever. So um, 
the Amazon influencer though, like you see it all the time on shorts where it's like, uh, I made $10,000 a month, like buy my $500 course and I'll show you how to do the same. Like those people are making thousands of dollars a month. Like, um, I, I make, <laughs> I've made like $95 on the videos, but I just started. So like I eventually may become an Amazon influencer first and then an eBay reseller second, because the it's, it's truly passive. Like if you do a product review on uh, let's, let's, where's one. I don't want to tell the products I did it on because you could copy them, but say you just did the iPhone 14 pro it's a thousand dollar phone. So you're probably going to get like 2% on a thousand dollars is what 20 bucks. If a bunch of people watch, I mean, buy that phone after watching your video, you get 20 bucks each time. So once that video is made, as long as that product still being sold on Amazon, you will get all the money forever. So there's some products that, that like a picture frame is $25 my wife bought. Well, certain categories you get 4%. So I made money on that picture frame and I'm the only video on that picture frame. So when people go to that picture frame, if they watch my video, I get the commission off the sale and they're already going to buy the item. So I just, uh, I want to tell you guys, like, it's not a bad thing to turn from reselling to something else. It's good to turn to reselling to kind of give yourself the time to think about other businesses because I don't have to punch in a clock today. Like I don't have to rush a project because my boss has like this funky idea and I got to pull off and do something different. Like I pretty much do whatever I want and make sure that the family's fed. But yeah, there's a lot of ways to make money whenever um, you get into content. Like I have people reach out to me through uh, the Amazon affiliate, like sellers on Amazon, like these Chinese companies. They'll email me and say, hey, can you do product review videos on these products? We'll send them to you for free. You do the video, but we they also want me to talk about it to you guys. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to talk to my audience about this lamp, the ceiling mount lamp, you know, even though it's like $80. And yeah, I'll get the I'll be the only video on it. So I will make money when it sells on Amazon if people watch it. But I'm not going to shill it to my audience that doesn't care about ceiling lamps. But I'm going <laughs> to ramble about Amazon Influencer to you guys because um, – you brought up like having second second jobs and stuff because that is my my part time job now is YouTube and then Amazon influencer like that's my two three jobs <laughs> and then and then the buy sell trade store let's just throw that one in there too. Uh, Mas Tejada, I used Snap. I used Snap the tags the way you are doing it until the day came that I ripped the tag off of an eighty dollar shirt. Now I use scissors regardless of how flinky the tag strip is. I, I've definitely put a hole into it. And I only do it like I know which fabric. I don't I know I don't do it on polyester shirts, you know. I really don't, unless it's like a low quality shirt. But uh yeah, I just don't like picking up the scissors a hundred times. It takes way too much. Brandon Jones, do you have a CPA? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh at first I didn't have a CPA and and for uh, those paying attention to the item haul, I'm going to the Goodwill bags. It's uh, 28 items, you know, $146. But um, I did not have a CPA in the beginning, right? So I had, uh, I, I, I kept an itemized list on Excel of every item I bought, the date I bought it, how much I paid, the title of it. Um, I would have all the fees. I pretty much had my own little calculator, but the eBay sales calc is way better than doing it yourself. And then whatever I profited at the end of the month, I would take a 25% and put it in a savings account. And then come at the end of the year, I paid the taxes that way. Now um, I have an LLC that I created and then I file it as an S corporation and my CPA helps set all that up. So I'm an employee of my own company. So I pay myself 30,000 a year is what I pay myself. So then any dollar that I make after that does not go to me as like, it's like it stays in the business. But then if I need to draw from it, like I'm able to draw from it, but that gets shielded from uh, Social Security and Medicare. So you save 15.3% on money like that. So that's why you see people um, have businesses because they can get their tax advantages. But yeah, I would suggest getting a CPA uh, because I'm not one, but uh, it, it, it just, it's a peace of mind. And then you have some like backup if you get audited because they'll, they'll be able to help you through. Patricia Knott said, just started watching. Great job. Love the videos from Louisiana. Cool. Welcome. I'm glad you like them. All right. Let's see what we got. Okay. I did get a pair of pants. I'm really trying to get away from pants. This is the uh, Wrangler 
It's the vintage polyester one. Unfortunately, the tag is super faded, but it does say made in USA on it. I'll just have to do the actual me waist measurements. It does have this barb here, but because this is like a heavier cotton, I'll just pull it off like that. But you want to hold on to the fabric so you don't make that hole. But on thinner fabrics, it'll, it could create a hole regardless. So you might want to use uh, scissors like, like our friend Tejada up there. Uh, on jeans, I like to uh, zip them up. I check the pockets because I found a $100 bill in a pair of Levi's before. I've actually found $147 in jeans uh, throughout my reselling life. And that's always a good day. And then I found probably 136 COVID mask in jeans and jacket pockets. So definitely <laughs> look out for those too. But yeah, the, the polyesters, they have like, I think a 40% sell-through rate and it should be close to like 30 bucks, maybe something like that. Hmm. It's like my jaw's not strong enough to get through the Skittles properly. This is a Wrangler. Now, this is an XLT blue plaid. It's a bit faded. It smells good, though. So, XLTs. Big and tall sizes are going to do better. This one here is pretty thin, but I leave this barb. I really don't. It doesn't, doesn't make any difference for me. Um, and then I just snap them up. But yeah, this shirt right here, you can expect to get $20 shipped. So at $5, $20 shipped, shipping label $5, fees, you're looking at like 6 to 8 bucks, like at 20 bucks. It could go for more, or it could go in a multiple, like quantity, a uh, multi-quantity order. So I'm really only making like, you could just say four to eight bucks per shirt, but you know, getting 30 shirts a day, if you can do that, or, you know, I'm listing between 35 and 40 a day, it's, um, you know, times, let's see, times five bucks, that's 150 bucks profit a day. Uh, but it actually is a little more cause I do have higher value stuff. So that's kind of how that works. Patricia Knott says tour of the warehouse. If you go to Taylor Exchange uh, Facebook, the business page, I actually did that yesterday. It's just a video, like a short video, but it goes through, uh, I condensed down my racks. So I have the Husky racks and they are the 76 inch width ones. And then you can actually do the bottom like cement floor or the bottom floor is the first rack. And then you can have them all the way up and you actually add an additional rack. So I end up having um, six racks with eight boxes in each rack. So it's 48 total boxes and each box holds between 20 and 30 items. So on the low end, it's, um, you know, let's just say 48 by 20, you know, 50 by 20 is what, I don't know, math, a uh, thousand items maybe. Is that right? That makes sense. Let me, let me do the calculations. I don't want, let's do a 48 times 20. Yeah. So 48 times 20 is 960 items. And then um, 48 times 30 is what? Yeah, 1,414. So I have uh, six or seven, seven of those racks, six of them fully like racked out. And um, I just condensed down my racks to, to save space because my lister, she's taking photos like about 25 sets of photos an hour. And I just pump them out real fast. It takes like 30 to 45 seconds of listing, sometimes even less. Um, so I have to condense down probably a little more frequent, but. I am selling a lot though, too. So that's always good. Yeah. Timothy says a large with the size 16 neck. I don't know if that's accurate. Are you sure large? So that means 15 and a half and 15 are mediums. I thought 15 was a small 50. I thought it was 15 and a half. And then uh, I'll take your word for it, th Timothy, but I'm not, not a hundred percent sure about sure. <laughs> 16 neck could be right. I don't know. I'll have to look. Jonathan Melinda did your family always support you uh, becoming a reseller? I've heard of times where people's family members do not take reselling serious as a career. Yeah, no, absolutely not. <laughs> they did not support me. So uh, my dad was always worried that like I wouldn't be able to figure out what to do, right? Like uh, with my life, you know, I, I've had some uh, ups and downs for sure. 
And then uh, when I told him about reselling, he was just like, all right, but what else are you going to do? Like, are you going to do something else? I'm like, well, I do have my copier job. And he would ask like, well, how much you're, how much do you think you can get paid there? And I was like, I'll probably never get over, you know, like 18 an hour. And I was at 15 and I'd been there three years. And I was like, I don't know, man. He's like, man, that's not a lot of money. I said, I know it's not a lot of money. I said, but this reselling thing, he's like, you know, wasn't really serious about it. But once you show people the money coming in, like then they, they kind of get a little serious. They take you more serious. And then now that I'm like making money on YouTube and then like I'm starting this store and stuff. Yeah. People, uh, people will, will turn a little bit. And my wife was, she always supported it, uh, because you know, she's, uh, my, my biggest supporter in, you know, other than I guess my mom, <laughs> my mom's probably like one of my biggest. And, um, my wife though said, as long as it's not a, a hoarder house, as long as it's orderly and stuff, I I'm fine with it. Right. So, uh, I'm very, I'm very orderly. So it was no big deal. And then the money started coming in. So this is another, uh, blue plaid, uh, XLT short sleeve pearl snap wrangler. See, I got a lot of these XLT. Someone must've donated their entire closet. Cause there was some planes, Western wear, I think Eli Cattleman, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's common, man, because, uh, it's not like, people aren't aware of like how much money there is in social media. They're not really aware of like how much money is in reselling. And there's plenty of people that uh, don't make that much money doing it. This is a two XL denim and supply Ralph Lauren Henley. It's a long sleeve. It's got this uh, gray and it's like a black and white kind of Dang, They buttoned it all the way to the top and the buttons are kind of hard to undo. So yeah, if, if you guys are getting pushed back from your family members, just, um, Make sure you make time for them because I did have reselling and YouTube when I first started consume a lot of my free time because I was working full time and my wife would kind of be like, look, she'd be like, look, you can't, you can't be um, spending so much time on there. You know, like I need time too, but I was, I was so addicted to the growth and the success that um, it was very hard to drop YouTube and that's why I dropped it uh, before. It was for the better though. I didn't really know what I was talking about back then. I knew in here what it would look like, but I didn't know what I was doing while I was doing it, really. Hmm. This is one of the vintage Wranglers with the um, paper tag here. Now, this is a 17 and a half, so this is probably a 2XL. I would think. And it actually has red um, buttons, which is kind of unique. I never really put red button in the title, but that's definitely unique. See, this one smells kind of like on the fence. It's on the fence. It has that vintage smell, like that old, dusty, sat in the closet forever smell. So this one may go in the wash pile. Let's see. Yeah, JD said, he, he's saying that's a good question. So I asked him how many items you can get from the bins in six hours. And then he said, I just started going to the bins. That was my second time and I haven't stayed all day, but I guess over a hundred easily, maybe 150. I'll have to find out one day. Dang. So that's the thing. Like, but I've also heard at the bins, you can't just pick up like one category. Like I pretty much just sell uh, the majority polos, button ups, you know? So if I went to the bins, I'd be looking for women's and pretty much anything that can sell. And I don't really want to go into that. And then the other thing is like the commute, you know, I got to drive quite a, quite a ways to get there. Okay. So I'm going to put this one off to the side. Let's see. Hmm. I'm also um, just kind of waiting for the landlord to call me about the keys. Cause I'm going to cut her a check and then, um, I got to do shipping, but see, so I have my long sourcing day tomorrow. So that means I have to wake up like, uh, probably an hour earlier than normal, 45 minutes earlier. And I like to get my shipping done as late as possible today. So that tonight and tomorrow morning, I don't have like 30 or 40 packages. I just have like, you know, 15 or something like that. So I really try to push the shipping out, but I would recommend shipping as early as possible. I used to preload, like I would pre pack my items when I had my full-time job. And then every morning I would just, um, go drop them off. 
before work because I want to get that scan in as quick as possible. It really makes a difference when people get their stuff quickly. JD said, uh, Connecticut only has one bin store, though. Luckily, it's only 30 minutes away. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool, man. It's really convenient. Yeah, this one's uh, kind of the same. So this is the uh, Wrangler. And this is, I, I don't know if this one's vintage or not. It's definitely older. It's the Cowboy Cut XL Longtails. It's the same size, so it's definitely the same person. It's Pearl Snap Gray, a much better color. Um, so we're going to just snap this one up. Sometimes you got to look to see if the pearl snap uh, snaps are crushed because sometimes they can be crushed or sometimes like the, the snaps don't actually seal like they're real loose because people just um, they just damaged them, you know, working on the ranch and, and farming and all that good stuff. But yeah, this is going to be a good one. I'm going to actually put this. So all these like older ones, I'm definitely going to wash. Um, some of the other ones are fine, but. People are really on it about the wash stuff. I don't know why. Like, you're kind of risking it, right? I mean, eBay, I think eBay's policies, policy says every item has to be washed, and you have to include a note saying that it was washed. And I don't think anybody does that. And then you also, um, what if it's in storage for a year, and then you sell it? Like, are you going to wash it before you ship it? I don't know. And usually people wash used clothes anyway when they get them, even if it was washed. So... Jerry says 44 watching 19 likes. Let's uh let's hit up the likes for Sean on the YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, we're at 60 now with 29 likes because I got to that comment late. But thank you, Jerry. Um, Jerry is a lead lieutenant. Uh, I have not promoted him to moderator yet, but um he is he's in the running. The only moderators I have is my wife Stephanie and uh, Brian Roning, my closest, closest friend that is in Arizona. And uh, he's also a reseller and he's a YouTuber as well. And he's trying to get his YouTube back. So he actually put a video out about like, um, it's like a, um, he, he's out of a small one bed, not a one bedroom. He's in an apartment, but does everything out of a one bedroom space. He's got his storage, like everything. So he pretty much told like the struggles of, of how that is. And it's, um, he's just getting used to being back on camera. But yeah, if you guys want to go check out a video about like, what's it like selling? Cause he's, he's not as big a seller as me, but he's doing really well. He's full time and making a living from it. So, uh, Brian and my wife are the only moderators right now. Nick Picker says, I bought a Wrangler Ranchers Pearl Snap yesterday for $1, but got home and found it is missing the backside of the snap on the second one down. Would you still sell it an XL? Yeah. I mean, at a dollar, I would, because a lot of those guys are going to wear that as like a, a work shirt. Just make sure to notify that issue and put that in the second photo, like highlight it and um, just explain it. But it, and you know, at you may get like, let's say 12 bucks shipped, right? But on a dollar, you're still making like five bucks. So it's up to you. I would, I'd probably still sell it. If it was missing it completely, I'd probably consider not selling it, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I think you can still get some money for it. This is one of the buckle black shirts, uh, gray. Oh, I thought it had something on the back, but it's got this cool little, um, what do you, would you call that lattice or something? So yeah, buckle black's a pretty decent one. Let's see. We got uh, some buttons to take care of, though. I definitely like buttoning, buttoning these after I buy it, you know. It makes it look cleaner on the photos, which people... I had somebody dog on me about my photos saying they were frumpy. They were like, you can get a dollar more per item because your photos look kind of shadowed. And I agree, they are a bit shadowed. It's just, just when you have, like, the success of selling, like, you think, why do I need to make changes? But... I am setting up a new photo station and I'll make a video about that. Whenever I get in my new space, it's going to be um, computer desk, photo station, and then there'll be like a uh, um, something in the middle for customers to bring their clothes and then I can sort through. And then I'm going to just kind of show how the layout is. And then I'm going to have a couple racks in like the, the sides of the store so that people can shop if they want to buy a shirt or two. I just don't know what the price point is for shirts in my town. It might be like, like Plato's Closet in Dallas, I think it's a it's it's 14, 16, or 18, like eight to, to to 14 possibly for like a Ralph Lauren. But I don't know because because I don't want any like low end brands to be in my uh I don't want any low end brands to be in my buy sell trade store. I just want it to be all like pretty good brands. Timothy Doyle says I worked in a men's department retail store for years, 16 
is the low end of large. 15 and a half is the high end of medium. There's a little cross around that size from brand to brand. Okay. I suppose. I just wonder if I'm doing them wrong. I don't want to look it up, but I have something over here on my computer. Let me just check because I, I could be wrong. I do make mistakes. See, now I have it straight off of Google and it says medium is 15 and a half to 16, large is 16 and a half to 17. And maybe that's for a certain brand, but I don't know. I've been putting 16 as a medium for years. I think, um, oh, let me see. Hold on. Chest. It says, see, it says chest for a medium is 39 to 41. So I don't know if that means, um, 20 and a half inches. Yeah, I don't really know, man. I'll take your word for it, but I, I'm not changing the listings, Timothy. I'll take your word for it, but I'm not editing my old ones. That's pretty much what I'm trying to argue myself out of, is listening to your expertise and changing my own stuff because it's been the same. Uh, the Grafter Gamer says, where do you buy clothing in bulk and pallets? I only caught the end of what you were saying. So yeah, I was talking about buying a, a a bale of clothing. So a bale of clothing, clothing is 1500 pounds and, and it's probably like 12 feet long by like four feet high, three and a half, four feet high. And then another, like maybe five or six feet, uh, width. So the store that I went to was a salvation army and they do not sell a single bale. They said the companies that buy these bales buy like 18 wheelers full of them. He doesn't even piece out one bale. So you're going to have to ask like other thrift stores, like, Hey, do you have like, uh, you know, a Gaylord box, you can buy those. Those are four foot by four foot, but it's very few that actually sell those because um, they're selling the clothes themselves. And then the people that are buying them are also other thrift stores. Like Goodwill may sell bales to people, but other thrift stores are buying those and then creating their own thrift store. So like the garage seller, like they're not going to give you, I mean, honestly, if he gave me that bale and I put it on a flatbed trailer, I wouldn't even have the equipment to take it off the trailer. You would need like a, a forklift. You would need a place to put it. And then even when you open the bales, it expands out like, I mean, huge, right? So it's not, um, it's, it's a bigger operation, like definitely more than I can bite off right now, but, um, there's a way to get it done. Um, but yeah, you'd have to call pretty much just go to every thrift store or call every thrift store in your surrounding area and ask them for a Gaylord of clothing or a bale of clothing and just see what they say. And then learn about the process of it. But some of that stuff is going to be rack pools, meaning it made it in the store for a month and they pulled it off. And then you're buying that stuff or it's damaged and stained. And then you're buying that stuff for like 15, 30, 50 cents a pound. And then you're talking really low end clothing. I'm talking like soft surroundings. I'm talking uh, George, like you're getting some faded glory, but then you may get like a good piece here and there or like a really nice piece with a stain. I mean, so it's a different ball game altogether, but it is possible. Jerry said, thank you. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you, Jerry, for showing up all the time. Flippin' Junior, so all your inventory is staying in your garage? Yes. Currently, I'm going to have my warehouse as my garage. I'm going to have the buy, sell, trade store downtown. This, the items for sale in the store are probably going to be like standalone inventory for the store. If it doesn't sell in a month, maybe I'll take it and put it on eBay. And then um, all the items that I buy from the store or in the store from my town, I'm going to post those on eBay. And then the stuff I get from the bigger cities, Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma city, I'm going to bring those brands that you don't really see here and try to sell them for 15 or $20. I don't know if I can pull that much money in town in person, but maybe, maybe I can. Timothy says, if you list the size, you will be fine. Most buyers know leave, Current listings for sure. I was just letting you know what I've off, what I've learned. Not offended. Okay, <laughs> I would say the sleeve length is thirty five or more listed as a large. Yeah, that's another thing. I don't measure the sleeves, but some people do ask about the sleeves. Some people absolutely ask, and I always feel like too high and mighty to waste time measuring a sleeve. But like most of those people don't buy anyway, or even check the message. Dang, that's good. Okay. So this is a Rudoc. Oh, you can see that. Rudoc, it's got the Made in USA flag on the side. It's a softer one. It does say Made in USA. Size 17, extra long tail. 
I don't buy a lot of yellow. I mean, I buy yellow shirts, but yellow is not like the best color. But maybe it's a little cooler in the summer than all the blacks and stuff. Um, it's not like – I don't think it's the best Western shirt to sell, Rudolph. I think it's what it's called. Yeah, Rudolph. But it does sell. It will absolutely sell. And that's kind of what I'm about. I try to find things that sell. If it ends up being a great brand, a great price, yeah, I buy it. I'll pay up it for like there's a Ralph Lauren ombre. It's pink and it um it's all linen. So yeah, I paid I paid 10 bucks for it because that's a good shirt. But this shirt I would not pay 10 for. Five is definitely the limit. And this one, yeah. So like I'm washing the ones that just smell like kind of like that old man closet, the closet. They it's been in there for a very long time. So I'll give that a fresh, a fresh wash. I probably shouldn't even fold it, but it's habit. The crafter gamer says, thanks for repeating yourself. I'm trying to get more items each week, looking at all my options. Now here's a little, um, here's an option you guys can look at. So any, anybody who's a consignment store or a buy, sell trade store, especially if it's like a single operator, like not a franchise, ask them what they're doing with their clothes or if they have any clothes for sale because what happens is somebody will bring them like 50 items right and then they say well we can buy these 10 items but we can't buy these a lot of times people that are at the register will just give those clothes to that company and then they either decide to donate it or something now i i've heard that it's kind of taboo for them to take that donation and sell it because I don't think they're set up as like a thrift store. I don't know if they're organized the way they're supposed to be in order to resell that. So a lot of those people end up donating it somewhere to either a, um, a shelter or just something like that. So there is a possibility that you could uh, grab that donation from those people. You're just going to have to ask each one of them and be honest with what you're doing and don't, don't sound like, Hey, give me all that stuff. You're, you know, don't want to do that. But uh, that is a way to get free inventory because you're providing the service of hauling it away for them. They don't want to pay their employee or have to go to the thrift store themselves to donate it. So that's something you can try. This is Wrangler. This is the other, it's the made in USA. So this is cotton polyester, 65% uh, polyester. And this is that nice blue stripe one. And if you look, the pearls are actually like a really pretty uh, uh, looking color. Oh, shoot. I don't know if you can see it right. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. It's like a blue color. So these ones with the, the, the colored pearls are definitely pretty good. But yeah, it still smells like old guy, old guy clothing though. So uh yeah, so I mean just try to figure out where all the clothes are going, right? Try to try to get them before they go to Goodwill. That's what I'm trying to do. And I think like buying clothes from people, having a place for them to come, I think that's gonna be a strong option if there isn't already that that uh place in your in your town okay let's keep on keeping on all right so yeah i grabbed these so fast i didn't even look at them too closely like if there's flaws i i get uh two days to return so um tomorrow i'll be out of town and then i'll go thursday if there are flaws on these shirts and trade them in because i'm not i don't really like to keep flaws if i can return it like um you know if i can stand it Okay. Buckle black. Probably watch this one too. So what are you guys doing right now? 54 of you, 32 likes. Like is everybody uh, taking photos or listing <laughs> or working the day job? <laughs> I got my dog Ragnar in the backyard. He's just kind of chilling, barking at squirrels and whatnot. He used to not be an he used to not be an outdoor dog. He used to be like an indoor dog. And with my son Seth and everything, like it's just better to kick Ragnar outside and be like, "Dude, go entertain yourself, my man." I got too much I need to teach Seth. Like he just found his feet for the first time, but he doesn't know how to like walk he doesn't know how to mow the lawn he doesn't know how to take trash out i've been trying to do these things with him so he can figure out how to do the chores so i don't have to do them 
But um, he's still too – he's too young. He's six months. He doesn't know enough. So I can't spend time with Ragnar when um, Seth is so far behind as a, as a man. You know, he's got a lot he needs to do. Oh, no. Nick Picker says listing. Samantha says working her real job. Oh, <laughs> no. I Okay, hey, you risk it. But now as a boss, like – I hate to see it. <laughs> I hate to see it. Uh, Timothy says, my day job. Dang, man, where do you guys work? Are y'all like office workers? I was a service tech, so like I would go on service calls, but best believe when I was driving to and from, I was listening to some YouTube. <laughs> I guess that, yeah, I guess I'd be in a live if I was in my day job, but like I was commuting. I don't do it in front of the computer. Oh, thank goodness. Samantha says she works from home. Okay. <laughs> what do you do? Are you like a... There's some cool work from home jobs. Jerry says unclutter. Laugh out loud. That's what I'm doing, man. Trying to trying to get the stuff folded. Beat Fame says taking photos. Yeah, that's... I was kind of thinking of taking photos myself. This one's kind of rare. For me to find it's wrangler gold i don't know exactly why they came out with this wrangler gold one but i just sold a yellow striped one with stains on it for uh 18 so this one is clean but the colors are kind of gross it's this nasty looking beige um it's a size 18 made in usa so vintage you know and it's that same guy i think the same dude just donated or you know maybe the guy passed away and his his wife or kids brought all the clothes up here but Flippin' Jr. says, clean in the office to make a big push on these listings. Yeah, I think clean office space, like a, a actually like bringing the spray and cleaning it, like it'll help your brain go a little faster. The crafter, Crafty Gamer says, taking a lunch break right now. Cool. And Samantha, the work from home. <laughs> Brian, yo, yo, about to hit some lunch early today. What's up, man? I haven't called you yet today. I'm, I'm waiting on my keys, man. I'm waiting on the keys to the shop. So... I was um, looking on YouTube and I was like, man, what am I going to listen to? Like I listened to the trash to cash podcast religiously. They dropped their new ones an hour ago or whatever, like two hours ago. And I, I saved that for my Dallas trip so I can listen to it on the drive there. It really gets me through. It's an hour and a half, but I didn't want to listen to it today. So I was like, let me find, oh, I wonder if there's a YouTuber that's live. Right. And I didn't see anybody. So I don't know if I'm not subscribed to everybody. I think you can only subscribe to a thousand people too. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. Let me just go live. I figured there's other people having the same problem that I am and want to listen to somebody talk about reselling. So this one's going to go over here. So yeah, Brian, are you eating Chipotle? Brian's a big Chipotle guy. Then points, man, the Chipotle app and the points hit hard. I just found out about the apps, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Chipotle. The big three that I go to. Cole says, been watching for a while. Now really appreciate all your insight. Trying to get out of construction. Been waking up at 4 a.m. to photo and go to work and come back uh, at night to list. Wow, man. Cole's getting it. I worked. I framed houses, man. I don't know what kind of construction you are, but framing houses, there's no shade. Not in Texas. So, um, And you feel like you're going to die sometimes. I mean, have you ever walked a wall like with no rafters yet. I mean, nah, no joyster or rafters. Yeah. It's, it's just not cool, man. Uh, good to good on you though. That's, that's pretty much what I did. I, I did nine to fives and I did, I did most of my work after I would do some shipping at night and in the morning, but I did most of my listings and photos, uh, between like seven and 10, but I didn't have a kid then. So like, if you got a family, I know, I know it's way harder. You got to do it when they're asleep. Uh, but good on you, man. Good luck. Hopefully you're not too tired at work. Cause I know when you're working, that type of job, you can get hurt. And if you're tired, there's a higher chance for that. So be careful doing from that. Timothy says, I work from home like Samantha, office work. Okay, gotcha. Samantha says, no one ever understands what I do, but it's called global market development for a nonprofit in the sustainable building field. Yeah, you're pretty much dead on. No clue what that means. Uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that means you try to sell like... Uh, 
you try to sell either the service or product that your company's doing. So you're marketing, uh, I would assume that's what it is. You're marketing on social media, maybe trying to like get the word out and get uh, buyers possibly. I don't know. It's just my guess. Those are some big words though. I figured, cause you said you were from, I think you were from somewhere uh, smart. So I was like, um, smart people usually do like smarter jobs and stuff. Eli Cattleman, this is XLT. Eli Cattleman's decent, man. When it comes to Wrangler, like an Eli Cattleman, they're they're pretty similar. But yeah, this one, see, I can tell that I can tell you can tell which ones were washed before donating, and then you can tell which ones just sat in a closet. And this one definitely was washed. So yeah, I, I just um Eli Cattleman and Wrangler, man. It's it's the Burger King and McDonald's. It's the Chick-fil-A. And uh, raising canes, you know, it's the battle that must go on. And and I think I don't even know where they sell Eli Cattleman. Honestly, I know Wranglers at Walmart, but honestly, like people buy the crap out of Wrangler. It's that strong brand recognition, you know. Brian says, "Nice, Cole. That's a tough day, but you got to do it to get out of the rat race." Yeah, yeah. I mean, and honestly, I work I work multiple jobs now. Even though you know I work for myself, I just. I like working, man. I like building, uh, building something big to, to help out my, uh, my family line. You know, we want, we want Seth to be set up pretty well. We want him to have it, you know, and he's going to work for me in the summers and stuff, but I'm not going to make him work during like sports and, uh, like the school year. I don't, I think he needs to focus on some other stuff, but he will work for me. I figure whenever he's like, Three or four, I think he'll be big enough to start doing some, some, some serious work for me. Because what they have is stamina. Kids have stamina and energy. What better way to burn that out than to condense down my inventory? <laughs> no, nah, he wouldn't be able to do that. You could probably give him scissors though. Cut off, <laughs> cut tags off. <laughs> no. Nah. Couldn't do that either. I don't know, man. Hmm. Okay. Sometimes they don't snap. Real salt. Hey, happy to have you back. I'm at work too. Learning everything I can from you. Hope one day I can be reseller full time. Better work hard for me than someone else. Yeah, it's much more rewarding to... To know that, you know, you built something and you earn the money and you get all of it, right? I mean, you know, eBay, the post office, Uncle Sam, they get some of it. Yeah, sure. But you get all the rest. Mm -hmm. The Skittles stuck to like the roof of my mouth. So yeah, this was another one of the washed ones. Hmm. Yeah, it was a pretty good day, man, so far. I haven't fixed my hair. Like, I mowed this morning, and I didn't even I didn't even shower after I mowed. I went straight to Goodwill. So I may work out and then shower after that. I don't know. That's bad, right? You guys shower in the morning or before bed? That's controversial. Some people do it twice. Yeah, this is a good one. So this is the uh, XLT as well. Oh, you can't even see it. This is kind of a cool, like, you know, reddish uh, one. You know, you start seeing these clothes so often, and then you end up seeing um, patterns and colors that you've never seen. And you know, like, oh, that one's pretty cool because I don't see it very often, you know? Cole says, uh, I'm a little lucky trim carpenter. Yeah, that's nice. Trim carpentry is um, is pretty pretty good because everything's usually done, right? You're, are you doing, like, doors and... Um, I don't know, like window frames or things like that. I just, doors can be really tough though. Cause uh, especially in Texas with the weather, especially when people have like solid wood doors, it can be a problem. Marilyn Wilson says, I'm a retail merchandiser. After work, I go back in and grab the good deal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mar Marilyn is, uh, she's playing both sides of the fence, man. She's, uh. She's doing the big, the big, you know, department store stuff, and then she's also scooping in the the coupons. 
I worked at the commissary whenever I was 14 through uh, 18 in junior high and high school. I bagged groceries for two years and then, or two and a half, three years, three years, two and a half, two and a half, three years. And then I was a cashier for the rest of the time. And they would have these coupons, you know, the 32 ounce Powerades. They would have a coupon for, uh, I think it was 50% off and they were like 58 cents after tax. So like we would get the stack of coupons, like me and a couple of the other baggers and we would buy them for eight cents a piece coupon in they were so mad like they'd be like those are for the customers and i was just like it's 100 degrees out here and we're bagging these groceries and pushing these all the way to the back parking lot and on the military base you only work for tips so like as a 14 year old i was pulling in anywhere like if i worked a saturday like a full saturday eight to six that's okay maybe eight or nine to six it's a long day on a saturday but i could make like a hundred bucks and then on a sunday like I was going to church for a while and then I, I chose football and then work over church, which my mom did not appreciate. Um, but anyway, it I would make like 60 bucks to 80 bucks on a Sunday and working for tips. So anyway, we would, uh, you know, we had like a crew of baggers and sometimes I'll run into the old baggers from like different, cause there was different counties, you know, kids would come military kids. And then, um, or military families, you know, to get on base to bag. And I'd just be like, yo, bagger or whatever. But uh, they're like, what, dude? I'm like, oh, yeah, we were back. I was bagger 373. We had to wear white collared shirts tucked in. Or no, not tucked in. And then we had like this badge with like our uh, bagger number and our photo, I think. And then um, I wore a red Cardinals hat because I was on the baseball team, junior high Cardinals. So people would be like, kid in the red hat, you know, that's – Cause you like you, you're in a line of baggers, right? So like whatever the hot registers were, which would be either the best cashier, like the, the hardest worker to get them more customers, you would have to wait in line with the baggers. So the person on the left of the register that was bagging would take the load out. The person on the right would have to help them. So you would find out what the order of the baggers were. So it'd be like, Hey, who's got you? And they'd be like, Oh, this guy does. And you have to go find them, ask them who has them. And you're working with like, a lot of it was um, Vietnamese women who were married to military men. And then um, some old retirees were there and then a bunch of kids, like 14 year olds. So it was a, it was a very interesting experience because a lot of that is like you do all that work and you help bag a big load and then you may get like your load and it's, you get like $1 and you're just like, now you got to go back in line, back out. And uh, that's the kind of stuff I learned uh, to work like an actual job, but I made really good money, but like, I don't want, uh, I don't really want my son to have to bag groceries. I'd rather him work for me. And, but, but at the same time, like I got a lot of exposure to how other people are around money because if somebody left the tip in like the tip jar bucket at the register and that person went out and came back and did not think that all the money was in there, like you saw some serious anger. Um, it was just the wild west. So when I see somebody bagging groceries, man, I'm just like, dude, I know what you're going through. <laughs> like, I understand, you know, but, um, that was my first job, I guess. I know a lot of people care about that, but, um, I don't know. It's good. It's good to do crappy jobs. I think as a kid to an extent, you know, to an extent. And ideally my son doesn't have to like do that. You know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll set him up with a crappy job for like a month or two and be like, all right, do you want to work that crappy job and make seven twenty five, or maybe the minimum wage is like, 10 bucks by then or something like that or 15 it's not 15 here i know some states are um or do you want to work for me and make like you know ten dollars an hour something like that it's still low but it's different type of work and then he can learn more um you know but the stuff i'm teaching or teaching the stuff i'm sharing with everybody like i'm not trying to i'm not trying to be a teacher but i i um i do have experience on like things you know so I'd much rather, and I'd, I'd much, I'd much rather spend time with him than send him to, uh, to Chick Fil A, you know, to work with those. And and my pleasure to everybody, like, not, not for my kid, no way, dude. You're gonna have it better, but buddy, unless you're like a little jerk, then I'm gonna make you do like a bunch of terrible labor, like clean the underside of my lawnmower or sharpen the blade. Like I hate sharpening the blade. It's so, it's so good to do, but it's such a pain to do, man. Colin says, I got a son that's about to turn three. Oh, boy. Yeah, I can only imagine how that's going to be. 
Henry Garcia says, greetings from California. Stay lit. Love the content. Thanks, Henry. I will stay lit. I'm not a smoker anymore, though. I used to do a lot of tobacco. Uh, and, and some of the devil's lettuce, I'll be honest. But no more. I had to be, uh, I don't know. My wife really didn't like the tobacco. But I love like chewing tobacco, like Copenhagen Long Cut and Skull uh, Wintergreen. Man, takes me back. I love that stuff. All right, so we got Eli Cattleman. A lot of these were XLTs, and it, like I said, it's the same guy. The same person donated his whole closet. Or he, you know, might have passed. But yeah, or his wife just <laughs> took all his stuff and sent it to Goodwill. That'd be bad. But they're all mine now. I own all these shirts. Five bucks a piece, man. I know it's a lot, but it's inventory, right? You got to make money somehow. Brian says, vintage Eli Cattleman I think is better, but the new Eli isn't great. Yeah, There's a lot of truth to that statement. Samantha says, you would think it was sales, but it's a lot of spreadsheets and reports and PowerPoints and such. You are much more entertaining than my job. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. But I don't know if the bar is that high for what's more entertaining than Excel <laughs> spreadsheets and, and PowerPoints. But I'll take I'll take it. I'll take the credit. Um, are you using Chat GPT in your in your work? I feel like that would help. I'm uh, trying to learn how to use Chat GPT in my life. I think it's I think it's, I think it rocks, but. You almost like it's only as smart as like how smart you are. So if you're not like me and can't think of like good ways to use it, then it's not that good. But when I do think of ways to use it, it's really good. Another Eli Cattleman here. This one's the short sleeve pearl snap. So when it comes to like pearl snaps, long sleeve is better. If you think about it, long sleeve people can wear in the winter, but then they can also roll up their sleeves and wear it in the summer. So there's that much more use out of it. And then the short sleeve, like, I don't even think I own a short sleeve pearl snap. I own some, sh a couple short sleeve button shirts, um, but I don't, I don't wear them very much. I just wear t-shirts. Uh, let's see. Corsi says in the morning. Oh, shower in the morning. Brian says shower is a part of my lunch break. Gross. Dude. <laughs> the midday shower, like, like totally on the fence of morning or afternoon or evening. He's like in the middle of the day. Yeah, so this one I'm going to wash. Yeah. That one just doesn't – it just smells like it was worn but not uh, – wasn't washed or that old smell. It's kind of like it, it just needs to be washed. Not bad, but yeah. So if you look at it, it's probably like, I don't know, 30% of these clothes I'm going through are going to go into the um, into the wash. Cole says, yeah, I don't know. I was, I'm wondering if they saw they had to pay for shipping. Uh, I don't know who, which one you're talking about. Oh, you got the question. I just skipped the question. My bad. Let's go to Nick Picker first. Do you unbutton and rebutton all of those shirts? No, I'm buttoning all of them. The only ones I unbutton are the very top one and the first one down. And then I don't button the collars or the um, cuffs. But when I throw it in the wash, it stays buttoned. I mean, if it comes unbuttoned, obviously I rebutton it, but yeah. What time is it? Ooh, it's almost lunchtime for me. Hour and 18 minutes. I'll keep going. I got like a few items. Dang, man. The focus on this camera. I'm telling you guys, my next YouTube check, which comes on the 21st, I'm looking into a new camera, man. This webcam is just, it's just cheap. Yeah, Cole said your question. Question for you guys. I just had an open return request for a shirt last night, about five to ten minutes. Then I got a message saying close. Never seen that before. What do you guys suggest? Um, sometimes eBay sends like the re return type thing, and then they'll say like buyer closed the return. So maybe he made a mistake or misclicked or something. Because there is a way that you can buy an item on eBay and then like you do the return, but then you say like cancel or something. There's there's a way to be like, like he may have made a mistake or he just realized that it wasn't a mistake with the shirt that he wanted to return possibly. Um, 
Yeah, Cole, Brian says, Cole, it sounds like they canceled the return, but I'm not sure. And then sometimes eBay will message me and it'll say like return. And then all of a sudden it says buyer closed because like case closed because the buyer took too long to, to ship it back. So it's like eBay alerts you, hey, there's a return. Oh, wait, it was closed. And I have seen some weird stuff like that. Honestly, just don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. This is a BKE. This is actually a pretty cool shirt. It's a size medium and it's purple and black plaid with the black snaps. Now this fits me. I don't wear a lot of purple, but man, this shirt is like, it's a cool, it's a cool one. I would wear this one. If I was like 23 or something, this is a shirt like 18 to, well, let's say 19 to like 20, 21. I definitely would wear this shirt, but I don't know. We don't really go to the country bars and stuff all that much. Um, I'll go with my brother-in-law occasionally, but honestly, it's um, we're just not really into that. So I don't wear like a lot of fancy shirts. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Cole says, yeah, I don't know if they – yeah, okay, the shipping thing about the return. And then Brian says, you know me and my cigars. Yeah, Brian's a big uh, cigar smoker. So my wife, every time like I used to smoke cigars with my dad and grandpa like at, uh, for football games or whatever, she just hated the smell. And honestly, it like – it golf's like your whole system like you can feel it out your pores almost but they are pretty nice this is a wrangler it's got the paper tag so made in usa this one is a pretty cool one now it does have stains on the front but it's just these two so what i'll do is i'll probably put it under the lights maybe and see oh yeah it's got like dust back here Ugh. so this one will probably get washed but i'm gonna look to see if there's any bigger stains if it's just like two spots though on the front I'm not too concerned because this has got the look, right? Like it's a cool looking shirt and it's vintage. So if vintage items have stains, you know, people are okay with that. It's not too big a deal. But yeah, it's got some on the pocket though. Not too bad. All right. But yeah, I'm going to wash this one. I got some leftover Chipotle from Sunday night that I'm going to eat for lunch today. Do you guys eat lunch or do you skip lunch? I know some people skip lunch. Yeah, that's a cool shirt, though. Living outside normal. Thanks for all the advice. Can you talk about how much you are paying per listing for someone to create drafts for you? What is the industry average? Industry average. That's a funny term for it, but true. Um I don't talk about what I pay my employee. I pay her hourly. She's a W-2 employee. So right now she's doing 25 sets of photos an hour, and then she's probably listing like 12 or 13 an hour, maybe more, maybe 15. But I make her do uh, like a 60-40 split kind of. So she works six hours. She does four hours of photos and two hours of listings because I'm so much faster at the listings. And then I have to price the items. Like I make her price everything at $15.99 plus shipping, but like I'll go through to check for errors and then I'll adjust price. So you could probably call it like, I don't know, maybe a dollar or two, probably less. And then some people have overseas people do just the, the drafting. Like I know some people do, they do the photos manually and then they have an overseas person do the listings and it ends up being like, like cents a listing. I mean, like maybe like 10 cents or 20 cents a listing. It's really cheap to do that way. However, um, I'm not really comfortable with outsourcing the listing. I think the listing is probably the most important thing. Um, photos are important, but like listings are, are very important. And I don't really feel comfortable having someone overseas do it. Like I can train her in person. And I'm telling you, she's worked three weeks. And the last time she listed, there were like zero mistakes. Now her speed isn't up to, to my speed or close to half, but like she's getting to that point. And you could probably do it overseas, but I just, I feel so much better about it. Yeah. Brian's filling you in pays by the hour. I'm not going to go over what he pays. Jesus. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> Brian's got the inside knowledge. So yeah, no, I don't, I don't really want to talk about like their pay, but I mean, they're not making more money than me. So like it's less than, I probably make like 30, $30 an hour, maybe. So she's making less than that. Samantha says, I've dabbled with chat GPT for my work, but I want to try it out more. 
it could be super helpful. Okay. So, if I was an everything seller, I would use ChatGP on all, like most of my items. I would say, ChatGPT, write an eBay title for this electronic, you know, this air purifier, whatever. I would say, write a description for this air purifier. And I would pay for the one that's 20 bucks a month to get ChatGPT4 because they say the ChatGPT4 is like 10 times better than the other one. That I absolutely would. I, I use it for YouTube titles occasionally, like I've done it before. Um, you can do like, okay, so whenever this uh, live ends, when it's on YouTube, you can say ChatGPT, what's the summary of this video? And you can just like, you can actually get the chat GPT on the YouTube. So you can just do the transcript and it'll give you a summary of my video. And then you can say, what are the key points of this video? And then you can make content on the key points of my video or a huge video, like a Joe Rogan video or a Lex Friedman podcast video. There's content creators that are stealing the key moments using chat GPT from other people's videos and then talking about it as their own. They put their own twist on it. So like it's, it's absolutely useful. And there's so many things that you can figure out how to do it for. Like one good example is my mother-in-law. She has um, an Etsy store and she does custom bouquets for weddings and things like that. She can have the chat write a poem for Bethany's summer wedding about her Marvel bouquet or whatever it is. And it'll write a poem about it or a song or write anything. And then she can sell that as an add-on to her product. Like there's a lot of things you can do if it's text related or um, – it's incredible. It really is. Cole's from Missouri. Anybody from Missouri? I don't know, Cole. Christy Smith. Hi, just stopping by. Hey, Christy Smith. How are you? Let's go up another item. I do got to get, I got to get through this, but I'm not even that hungry. It's the Skittles and the, the Monster Energy drink. Oh, here we go. So this is the, um, Affliction shirt, and you can see it's got the awesome uh, wings on the back. Yeah. So on this shirt, it's not the best Affliction tag. There's better ones, but excuse me. I'm going to um, pop the tag on this one just because some of the items that I think I can get more money on, I don't really want the barb on it. But if it's like a 20 or 25, like I'll just leave it. This one I think I can pull a little bit more money out of. It's really cool. Yeah, it's clean too. I wonder if it glows in the dark. Surely not, right? Yeah, no, it doesn't glow in the dark. Okay. Cole says, I pick up BK Pearl Snaps Distress Bleach Color. Oh, bleached are pretty cool. Never found one like it. Huh. Cool. GM drop says skip breakfast and eat lunch. Yeah, I like the fast sometimes. Jerry says yes to lunch. Christy Smith says I just did 24 hour fast thanks to food poisoning. Oh no. Gross. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Christy Smith. That stinks, man. Food poisoning's the worst. Here's another Wrangler. This is an XLT. It's got the blue with the yellowish, yellowish uh, plaid. I'm really glad 55 people, 37 thumbs ups. I'm really glad you guys came in because I was bored and I wasn't going to watch some rerun on TV. I have been watching a lot of uh, storage wars that the episode with Roy, I guess he died at like 49 of a heart attack. He's so like crass, like with his people, the customers, but honestly they usually don't know what they're doing and he has to go there and clean up their mistakes. So storage wars, Storage locker stuff. Um, or no, I said storage wars. I mean shipping wars. Shipping wars, I think is the name. You know, I like that stuff. Uh, I think it's entertaining. Let's see. Timothy says, I would pay $10 an hour. If they hit a goal, I'd pay more. Like a tier pay, but quality must be there too. Yeah, I mean, it, good luck selling that to somebody. That's the problem with like, yeah, that sounds good. But if you want like a quality person, it's just how do you acquire somebody paying like a little bit of money? And then you got to find like, does that person have another job? Is that their sole source of income? Like, 
how many, how long do you want to go before they get to that goal? Like, are you losing money at, at a certain point? There's a lot of things to consider with it, but that's, you know, it's not a bad start. It's a nice round number, I guess. Brian Roning says, I got to go get lunch later. Everyone take it easy, Brian. GM Drop says, when you were building your store, how did you get momentum with getting daily sales? Did you underprice everything? Mm, kind of, sort of. I mean, I definitely, I take offers on everything, but when I was building my store, like I only bought stuff with like 75% sell through or higher. I did not buy stuff that I'm buying now. Like I'm buying stuff at like 15, 20% sell through and then undercutting to get it to move for five or eight bucks. Before I was selling like video game systems, combo units, like big ticket items, things that were just making a lot more money, but I wasn't able to source that much. So when I did go to source and I didn't have much time to list that much. So I only wanted to list like high profit um, items. But the, the thing is just the, the difference in shipping and the methods of photos and all that stuff is very taxing on the brain and made those work days really hard. But yeah, I, I think having um, best offers and giving people deals, man, they don't come to eBay to pay retail. You know, they come to some people if they're trying. This is a XLT. Some people that are trying to find um, that one shirt or that one item, they'll pay up because you're the only one that may have it. And the other thing is like these common Wrangler Pearl Snaps, like you're going to want to give someone a deal. And maybe they'll buy multiple of these XLTs. Hopefully they buy like five of them and I can give them a better deal. So, but yeah, a lot of it is sell through rate understanding, like back when I started thrift stores were a lot cheaper too. And people act like nothing's changed or like, it's not that big a deal that thrift stores went up in price. Well, guess what? If you were doing eBay, um, 15 years ago, like, yeah, there's other people that were selling at flea markets and things, but you were, um, crushing the game because everything was cheaper postage items. The, the amount of people like that were doing eBay back then was very, very little. And I don't want people to think like you can jump in and in three years be as big as me on this store. Like you might be able to, but guess what? It's way harder if you're starting out. Like you're going to have to work a lot harder. You're going to have to understand sell through rates a lot better, but there are more tools now. But I'm, I'm just saying like, um, I mean, like today I left with 28 items and I'm, I'm an expert sourcer, like especially in my town. I know the racks. I know everything. I know the margins. I don't even look for stains that much at the store. I just want to grab all the stuff that I know I can sell. If I was doing this like 10 years ago and I went, I would probably leave with like 100 items in like 30 minutes or, or an hour. It's just so, so different. It says chat disconnected, reconnected. Okay. It's so different. And I, I don't understand how people like um, talk about it like it's an easy thing. It's not easy. This is not an easy job. It's not passive. It, it takes a lot of effort to get money out of somebody's pocket for a used item on the internet that they can't physically touch, you know? And I mean, I'm, I'm glad there's a lot of influencers out there, but like I was created off of like, um, you know, daily refinement, essentially, like there's other resellers, like a bunch of everything sellers and all the popular, you know, all the popular people out there. I did learn like the everything model from them, but I learned clothing from, from Chris and, and tech right now. They've shared that with two to 3000 people that are paying for that. I didn't pay for it. So there's another hundred or thousands of people who don't pay for it and are still watching. Guess what? Like when you create a seller that can sell $200,000 a year in used clothing, the, the market can only handle so many of those people in an area. Uh, like in Dallas, there's probably like a few people like me that are like doing that high of volume because the next higher step from that is like a thrift store. The, the lower step from that is people trying to just like learn and say like, oh, well, I can't find anything. I can't pay this much. Like the sell through, it's, it's so low. It's like, my store is going to sell faster than your store. If I have so many items like eBay wants to push my store because they know I accept offers and stuff. So people act like, Oh yeah, it, it's easy to do, but trust me, it's very difficult to, to get to this stage, you know, like you can break in and make some money, but like, I don't know. I honestly, I started a store. I opened a store because 
I think I need help getting items. Like I just can't go find them. I really can't. I don't live in a, I don't live in a city. Like I drive, I'm driving two and a half hours away to go to, you know, maybe a hundred, there's a hundred different thrift stores there possibly. But like in my town, there's like two good stores and one store, I got seven items yesterday. And, and today I got 28 on a restock day. If it wasn't a restock day, I probably would have gotten like five items or something, you know? So I don't want to go on a little rant, but when people talk about like, oh yeah, just do this, do this. Like, guess what? It's, um, it's not getting any easier. The stuff, it's only getting more difficult. Okay. I'm going to drop this stack here. So I want to drop some stuff. I hope 61 of you are just like, dang, Sean's like really bumming me out. But, uh, I just want to tell you, like, it's tough, man. It's, it's, it's tough. Don't feel like, and, and that's why the person I spoke about earlier, they wanted the video on how, how a day one or should run eBay. Like I'll give a video about like briefly, this is how I would go about learning, but, um, it's, it's a little trickier, man. It's, it's definitely a little trickier. And I don't want that video to be like, Oh, I can't, this, this video is not good enough because it takes like a lot of time to acquire the, the know-how and the knowledge. Um, especially if you don't have the capital too, right? Like I spent 146 bucks. Like I won't see that money back right away. This stuff's going to take a while to sell. Cole says, I've watched your shipping video. Did you run into, <laughs> did you ever run into problems with the post office when you use a flat rate envelope or bigger envelope when shipping priority? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I have a pretty good story about it. I've told it a couple times. Oh, this one's sweet. This one's the buckle black again. Uh, it's got all the cool stuff on it. It's got the big snaps too. Really sweet piece. Yeah, you, you want to make sure you're not uh, annoying the postal workers because they deal with enough annoyance and they do not want to see a guy bringing in five, 10, 15, a hundred packages. And then, you know, having to like take crap from them too. So the big thing is if, if you're listing shoes and you want to save some money on shipping and you put it in an envelope, make sure when you put it in like this, fold this down and tape, tape it, right? Like don't put a crazy amount of tape, just tape it so that it's like a nice like package. And then, um, if they give you crap and say, hey, you can't do this, this because when people hear flat rate, sometimes they think like it actually needs to be flat. Like it's for paper documents, which is probably the purpose, legal documents shipping across the country. But people have kind of like gone into the gray, like like me and others about like, yeah, let's uh, let's put some shoes in there because if it fits, it ships. That's their motto, right? So until they change that. But it, yeah, if they give you a hard time, man, just, just apologize. Be like, look, I didn't know. I wasn't sure that's how it could go. Could I please get some further explanation on why I can't do this? Because each person at the post office has discretion on the envelope and, and the package. that they, they have the power to veto stuff and have it redone if they want it. And the, the, the more you're on their side and that you're in their corner, the less likely you're going to run into those types of situations. But do not back down hold your ground but <laughs> just do it tactfully so that you don't um so you don't go in with a big sales weekend and they forget to scan them all you know what i'm saying like <laughs> definitely uh just know they they have you they have you because they know you need that out you know they know what you're doing because they've been doing it for a while but yeah if it's a new person up there and they're like hey this ain't right be like well can i talk to somebody else um, I just want further explanation, that kind of thing. Uh, Ragnar's getting a little, a little feisty out there. I don't know who he's barking at. Can y'all hear him? Probably not, but he's barking out there. All right, a couple more items. Mm. You can also ask for those. Uh, bags too. Okay. Oh, I got four more items. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mario L says it also depends on the area you live in my, it live in my thrift stores receive donations from San Francisco Bay area and Palo Alto. 
very high in donations. I'm fortunate to be in a good area. Yeah. Palo Alto, San Francisco. That's what I'm saying, right? Like my, my goodwill, this, okay. Check this out. My goodwill is in the region of like Southern Oklahoma and like uh, very North Texas. Like I'm from Wichita Falls. If you guys didn't know, it's hundred thousand people. It's, it's 15 minutes from the Oklahoma border, Texas red river. And, um, like two hours and 15 minutes, two and a half hours from Dallas, Fort Worth. So my Goodwill told me last week, because I asked them about buying a Gaylord of clothing. They said what they do with their rack pools, they send them to Oklahoma and try to get them sold at their thrift stores. And Oklahoma, which is Lawton, like poor areas, even more poor than Wichita Falls, they send their clothes back to us and, and their rack pools. And then they just cycle it around until they can get it sold. And then they eventually put it to the uh, whatever to go to the Goodwill bins, right? So what the heck, man? Like they're not getting they're not getting a lot of good donations in poor areas. They're just recycling this stuff to try to get it sold to whoever for 99 cents at the very lowest in most stores. That's why I'm trying to open a store to, to grab those donations before it ever even hits. And then people are more likely to send you clothes if you're giving them cash because people want cash. Like people want the clothes. Right here, we have a Royal Robbins. This is rare. There's no REI store or whatever in my town. There's there's nothing like that. So like Royal Robbins doesn't even exist. So this came from somebody at the military base or possibly somebody ordered it online and donated it. I do see this brand in Dallas, though, um, and it's a good one. My friend Brian actually told me about a couple of the hiking brands because he sees a lot of it in Arizona, and I I just didn't know. So I started picking up REI because of him, and that's why I would watch YouTube to figure out brands, you know. So, of course, he says, yes, it's not easy to start, especially when money's tight. Yeah, no, no kidding. I only, like, yeah, I would have, like, 40 bucks or 60 bucks, like, to go sourcing. And then by the time I sold everything and figured out the profit, I may have like, you know, another 40 bucks and then, and then boom, like some car repair comes or like some, something comes up uh, in my house and then I got to fix it. Like right now, my, my still weed eater, the, the head of it where you like kind of bounce it to get the string out. Like it's starting to kind of like crap out on me. So that's, that's not a lot of money, but that's just one of the things that back when I started would be a big hit, you know, like 20, 40 bucks. I'd be like, dude, I can't be spending money on this. Like I wasn't making any money full time. This one I was on the fence about because the collar's kind of loosey goosey, but this is, um, RV, uh, CA. It, it was on the dollar tag though. This green was the dollar today. So because this is thin, I, well, I would snip it off, but because it's like low quality, it's a three quarter sleeve shirt. So, and this one I'm going to wash. That one just, <laughs> that one's been around for a while. It needs to be washed. <sighs> yeah. Money, 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 man. It's always, it's just a tool. It's balancing everything out. Cole says, good advice. Thanks. Yeah. Hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah. I know I ranted a little bit, but. T-Flow. I drive two and a half hours for more desirable items. Got to do what you do. Yeah, man. It's tough, man. My wife hates it. I hate it. I don't see my wife or kid only in the morning that day. And um, it sucks, man. But while he's little, I think it's fine. But once he gets bigger, like I don't want to be missing anything important in his life. So, yeah, it's another Eli Cattleman XLT. Ideally, what will happen is I get enough items from the store to list on eBay the buy, sell, trade store. And then I can go to Dallas just like during the day. And by the time she gets home at six, like I'll be leaving Dallas and that like four and, and coming home at like six, you know, so I can just kind of meet up with my wife at the house and then be dad for, you know, from five thirty to eight is pretty much like my dad time right now. And then I go back to work. I work another from eight to 11 most days or eight to 10 list items, kind of prepare, try to get things organized. And uh, yeah, I wake up at six. Uh, I'm pretty much dad in the morning, help my wife as much as possible from six to like seven thirty, seven forty five. So I'm pretty much only a dad five hours a day. Yeah, and he's at daycare for eight hours. So it's crazy. It'd be cool to be like a stay at home dad, but man, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to entertain my kid all day. There's no way. And still make money? Nah. 
even if I had all the money and my only job was to watch him all day for like 12 hours, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd sign up for that, man. He needs to have interactions with other babies and toddlers and, and different people and different experiences. He doesn't need just me in his ear because I'm not the best. Uh, there's other people that provide other aspects. Like I don't have great, um, like I don't have great emotional, like emotions and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm really calculated. Uh, I, I don't, uh, some people say I'm callous, you know, I don't have that type of stuff. But if he's around like women at daycare or he's around other kids, like he can get different um, hits of experience for his brain. If he's just around me, man, he's going to be pretty good at business, but he's not going to be like the the best person uh, he can be. So he's got to be around other people. This one is uh, Under Armour and it's the fishing one. So like the Under Armour logo. So like this Under Armour is, you could call it hunting. It's It's camo, right? This Under Armour on the ends have hooks, so it's the fishing one. Now, this actually being gray plaid and a size large, this is like a $30 shirt, but it's got this um, Ryan Directional Services embroidery on the sleeve, so it pretty much knocks like $10 to $15 off. It really does. People will still buy it, but um, they're mainly buying it as like a test shirt to see if they want to spend full retail on it because they want to see how it feels. Yeah, that one's clean too. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the live stream. Hour 45 minutes. I had to make up for last week. 62 of you, I'm signing off. I really appreciate everyone that came in and um, jumped in the chat. And just uh, even if you didn't, you just were able to support by by clicking on and, and letting it play. So uh, have a good day. I will have the best of sales video out. I'm probably going to launch it like later tonight just because I got some other stuff to take care of. And... I'm going to do like a, maybe like an intro video, like reselling 101. Like this is the bare, bare bones basic to start, but um, maybe that'll help. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But it'll answer that one person's question and hopefully, hopefully they can get some advice. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.